Hey everybody, welcome back to Chortlecast. I'm one of your hosts, Jake, and alongside me, Steven, the Stream King, Far Cry Guy, uh, the XCOM X Man. Uh, various, various, various. Yes. 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 <laughs> Steven, I'm tired. Are you tired? I'm exhausted. I'm I'm tired. I'm not so much tired as I look tired because it's like 200 degrees outside and it makes me feel tired. Yes. The heat I'm not tired. and the lack of sleep because we were playing Division last night <laughs> till, <laughs> till a good 1.30 in the morning. Uh, and we'll get to that. Uh, yeah, I'm exhausted. But anyway, in case you didn't know, this is Chortlecast, the official podcast of Chortle Games where we talk about video games, movies, TV, anime, pretty much whatever we want to talk about. It's mostly video games. Because that's yeah. our life. Video games are life. I mean, we're not called chortle shows. No. Right? We're not called... Not chortle we're not, movies. We're not chortle movies. We're not called Doki Doki Chortle or anything like that. So, here we are. We're chortle games. This is chortle cast. We're here to talk about stuff. So, we've got a great show for you today. Uh, we're going to talk a, lot, a little bit about Division here in a second. Because we played a lot of that last night. I dove straight in. Uh, basically, just dump, jumped right into the deep end. Um, with Steven, and it was some yeah. great fun. Uh, but we're also going to be talking about the new Overwatch hero that just got announced. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Sony Fortnite Switch crossplay debacle. Um, we're going to be talking about Bomberman R, some new stuff there. Then we're going to talk about Xbox Games for Gold this in the month of July and PlayStation Plus in the month of July. So uh, a lot of great stuff. But first, Steven, let's catch up. What have you been playing been playing Destiny 2. Yeah, we have been it's, playing a little bit of Destiny 2. Yeah, I've been getting into that again. It's been it's been nice, Jake, because for there was a good long time between the first time we played Destiny mm-hmm. 2 and now mm-hmm. that you and I didn't play much off stream. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like whenever we were playing something, we were on camera. It's been nice because we've been playing games mm-hmm. where we don't have to entertain people. <laughs> We can just be We're very quiet when we don't have to entertain people. I was thinking we about are. that last night because I was just kind of, especially once we hit like the twelve o'clock mark uh, yeah. at, at uh, when we were playing Division last night. I was just kind of coasting. Steven was like, "All right, let's go do this," and I was like, "I, right, I'm there. I'm shooting. I'm aiming. I'm throwing my turret down, yes. uh, having great fun." But man, yeah, I it, we, <laughs> I, I had a moment where I was just like, "I don't think I've said anything in the last hour." <laughs> And, yeah, <laughs> and, and well, we had that weird party issue too. Like we kept getting booted from the party, and of course yeah, that didn't make it any was. better because then we did have to kind of talk up and make sure it was still yeah. connected. But anyway, no, I get what you're saying. It's it's fun to get to just play. Um, and it, t- mm-hmm. speaking about Destiny too, I'm just glad because I felt like, especially towards the end of when you guys kind of broke away from Destiny, it was always salt. It was just God, this is bad. God, I hate this. Why do they do it this way? Yada yada yada, and and it, it, and it eventually grew to we're playing this because Jake wants to play this, and and that's the only reason. And so once that broke off, and it was like we don't even care if Jake wants to play this; it's horrible. We're not doing it. So it's very refreshing to come in, and not that I think you're pretty excited about the new updates and stuff. But even now, you're playing the game and enjoying it. Uh, yes. I think yes. And so at least from my perspective, it's a lot more enjoyable. So, it, I'm yeah. I'm loving. It. I'm still having a great time. I, I'm I'm glad I could get over my salt. I'm I'm glad they finally gave me something in the realm of a class to play that I enjoy. So let me ask you this: Do you feel like you're enjoying the game more right now because it has improved since launch, or simply because you know it's going to get better? I know what's coming. Okay. Um, it's it's a bit of both. Uh-huh. There there have been some. Some good improvements, some subtle improvements. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a, a lot of the stuff's more accessible now. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's a bit of both, um, but most of it, I would say, I guess I came back mm-hmm. because I knew what was coming and I stuck around and I'm playing it because. It, <laughs> trying to figure out how to put this so i know i'm gonna have way more fun when forsaken comes out right i'm having fun now 
but it's it's a lot of it's because I'm investing in a character that I know I'm going to eventually like be all about when right. the Well of Radiance comes out. Right. Um, so it's a bit of both, probably more forsa- Forsaken because they haven't added two. T- well, it's not that they haven't added much. It's, it's, it's subtle that, changes. They've made subtle improvements over it's, time, it's, things you might not yeah. necessarily notice over time, but being gone for so long and coming back, it's like, oh, this works this way now. Oh, I like this better. Moving on, stuff like yeah. that. And, and and not to say that they haven't added a lot. Mm-hmm. It's just that with what you and I have been doing, right. we've intentionally not gone to Mercury or Mars that much yet. Right. So I haven't seen uh, a lot of it. the Nucha stuff. Well, yeah. we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, well, and then the other game, really, I guess catch-up is kind of pointless right now because you and I have been playing the same things at the same time. I don't think you've been playing anything new that you haven't told me about. Uh, um... <laughs> No. <laughs> he looks over at his PlayStation <laughs> to see what's running. Uh, well, well. so last night, uh, or yesterday, and this is still going on, so if you, this is like uh, your, your deal uh, tip of the day. Uh, there's a big PlayStation sale going on right now. I forget what they called it. Maybe it's PS Specials or something. Anyway, I digress. There's a bunch of big games that are on a huge discount right now. You can get Division uh, for, I think, it's fourteen dollars, and then plus yeah. tax, it ends up being like sixteen or something. But anyway, ridiculously cheap because right now in the store it's still fifty, or actually, really, it's a solid sixty dollars game. So you, you, that's a huge deal. So I jumped on it immediately because I've been saying I was going to get it with Steven for a while. As soon as it goes on discount, he's been claiming that GameStop has great discounts, but I just that's a drive. I don't want to do that. So finally got it digitally for real cheap. We got it. Uh, I got the survival DLC. Uh, that we're actually we are we streamed last night, uh, and we're uh, we'll probably stream again. But uh, anyway, got that. So so Stephen took me in. We we got through the first bit of story. Basically, got me to where I was going to be ready to stream, and then we just kind of played because it was like let's Jake, let's get you leveled up. Let's try to get you here. Let's do this. Let's show you the game. Let's let you figure out how it all goes. I really liked the game. It was really really good. Uh, you know, you talk a lot about the story, Steven, and I don't know if it's because I was playing with someone. I didn't get as invested in the story. Um, I haven't, I, I wouldn't say it, it quite grabbed me like it, it perhaps as you, but that said, uh, I really enjoy the, the, the combat and the gunplay. Uh, right now I'm running, what is it? The security with, I've got a shield, like, uh, you've got the ballistic shield yeah, and, um, I've got that ballistic shield that I use. I had a sticky grenade that I got really good with for a bit, but then eventually upgraded that to a turret. Love the turret. That's right. Uh, Named it Tim. Tim the turret. Tim the turret. He's great. He's a great asset to our team. Uh, But yeah, no, I had a great time. It was a lot of fun. Um, We 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 paired off each other very well because you found a sniper really early. Steven started a new character as well, so he could kind of be on level with me. but Steven found a good sniper early on. So I was kind of up front distracting people, and then Steven was just popping their heads off. Um, but yeah, it's really fun. I mean, the, the shooting feels good. Uh, I, I am not a shoot Like, I'm not... I, 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 tell, I say all the time, I'm not the best at shooting. We joke that Steven has potato aim. I have pumpkin aim because I'm just horrible. Uh, but I, I feel like I held my own. At one point, you were like, Jake, you're doing really good. So I feel like if I can do really good in the game, there's either a lot of help for people who don't play uh, shooters in there, which I like, or it's an easy game to to get better at. So uh, we went a little bit into the dark zone. It was absolutely terrifying. Uh, that's the zone where it's it's kind of it's wouldn't you say it's kind of PvP? It's 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 a player versus environment area, mm-hmm. but players can turn on you right and kill you and take your stuff. Yeah. Well, it was terrifying because people would walk up to us, and I was just like, ah, ah, what are they going to do? What are they going to do? <laughs> and uh, at one point, I picked up something, and there were people with us, and you were like, Jake, you pick something up, stay behind them so they don't see that. And I was like, what do I do? What do I do? And we were drastically underleveled, uh, so it was, it was really scary. But anyway, uh, yeah, I'm excited. We, we didn't try – well, we, we've done survival. Um, that's a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, I, I, overall, I really enjoyed it. Um, all day today, I've just been like, man, I can't wait to, to jump in to some more Division this weekend. 
uh, if we get a chance or something or next week, whatever. So yeah, I'm I really liked it. If you haven't if you haven't played it and you've heard all these great things that Steven's been it, at one point it was like a joke almost that Steven had to mention division at some point during the uh, <laughs> podcast. But uh, yeah, I mean it's it's great. I I really enjoyed it. So so you mentioned the story. Mm-hmm. Um, just to elaborate on that, the narrative isn't great, right? Um, it's I think it's intentionally not great because the it very go, much goes to the approach of the agent is you, the story is you, right? Um, and so with me, it's not so much the narrative that gripped me as it is the atmosphere and the plot that they've laid forth for you to create your own stories within, right? Because the way New York is designed in that game is just, and, and I'm, I'm, just, I'm saying all this because it's now fresh on my mind again, mm-hmm. because I had never made a new character a second time. Right. So, like, I'm getting to play the game again for the uh, early on mm-hmm. with you, and it's, it's, it's really fun because it, I forgot how charming the game is early on to where, like, picking up a new gun means something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. To, um, so, it's really been really cool experiencing the the pre grind mm-hmm. division again uh, not to say anything bad about the 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 grind version of division because it's still great but uh, I've been loving that um, we noticed last night and this is one of the things I wanted to make sure we brought up um, you we went to the rewards claim vendor uh, which is yeah. the person that you get some, you can get um, consumables from um, right. and I noticed I was like holy crap this person has like 50 caches for me, which are basically, um, it, it's, it's a loot box, but it's not earned through microtransactions. It's st- stuff you find throughout the world mm-hmm. to open up to see what you get. Right. And it's, um, it's high level gear, specialized level gear, loop, yeah. that sort of thing. And so the, in, in division, so in, De- in destiny, you've got exotics mm-hmm. and that kind of determines your play style. And it's one item that's like, uh, you get an extra grenade slot. So mm-hmm. obviously, if you do that, you're going to be a character that uses grenades a lot. In Division, you have set armors, mm-hmm. which is for each additional piece of a armor set you have equipped, you get an additional bonus. Mm-hmm. Fire Crest is one I used as an example for you, uh, which is about dealing fire damage a lot. Mm-hmm. So if you have two Fire Crest equipped, you get an additional two incendiary grenades in your inventory. If you have three... Your fire turret, if you use the fire turret mod for your turret, it has additional range and additional damage, and so on. You get additional perks that stack upon each other. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of the end game armor you're supposed to go for, is sets, Mm -hmm. because um, that's how you develop your play style. Mm -hmm. And you got, correct me if I'm wrong, four complete set caches just for playing the game. Yeah, I mean, I logged in, I set up my Ubisoft account, but I don't think that really or the UB club account. I don't think that's what yep. unlocked it, but yeah, yep. it gave me the fire crest, uh, striker. striker. Um, I forget what the other two were. It was only two more major ones. D- yeah. Uh, oh, D three F and C was one of them. That's the tanky. Yes. Yes. And then, uh, and then even after, after that, I had like four or five orange ones that I don't remember what the names of those were, but I mean, yeah, I had a bunch of stuff. So it seems like, they're they're trying to entice newer players mm-hmm. to hey here's like skip the grind skip the major grind jump straight into the end game and be able to catch up with every, all your friends who've been playing this for however long and, and um, it's what it, it, it's likely what they're doing to uh, encourage people to start working on shields right. for division two which we're definitely going to be doing on the channel right. Um, don't know in what capacity, but we'll be working on some mm-hmm. between now and the time Division 2 comes out. Mm-hmm. Um, and I noticed on my character... Okay, just to clarify. Sorry, I had a little bit of a brain fart there. This is new. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, I hadn't seen this before, and I, I play Division pretty regularly. Mm-hmm. So this must have come out with the Shield update after E3. Mm-hmm. This is for... Everyone who plays the game. Mm-hmm. If you own the Division 2, you're going to get these things called reactivation caches. caches. Um, you're going to go to your rewards claim vendor, and they'll have it for you. Mm-hmm. Jake had not played Division prior to that day, Mm-mm. had one DLC, got to the, the base of operations, and he had all this stuff for mm-hmm. him. Mm-hmm. 
I also had the stuff for me. So it's not a, oh, well, if you start division at this point, Mm -hmm. then you get the stuff. No, it's for everybody, Mm -hmm. as far Mm -hmm. as I can tell. So if you are on the fence about division, or if you stop playing and have been kind of like, should I play again? Definitely try it now. There have been a lot of quality of life updates. There's a bunch of really fun stuff to do in it now. And you get free end game armor just for for blocking one. Right. And so that those straight. shields are going to unlock caches in two. The, the shield missions in Destiny One or Division One Division. are going to unlock things in Destiny Two. Division Two. <laughs> oh, gosh, Division Two. There's too many D's. <laughs> yes. Uh, there. And that's that's going to help you out in the long and yes. get started in the next one. So the way shields work, uh, mm-hmm. you may have noticed the arm patch yeah, that you have. I did. I had I had something from that. Mm-hmm. You, uh, you had the, uh, yeah, so, so you can change that. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like, um, it's kind of like the, the ba- like if you're playing Destiny, you've got the, the Hunter Cape, the Warlock Band, all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. It's kind of mm-hmm. like that, but it's purely cosmetic. Right. Um, so for each shield you complete in Division 1, mm-hmm. you get a patch for your arm. Mm-hmm. You also get loot for Division One, mm-hmm. really good loot. Mm-hmm. Like I think I got an exotic cache and a set cache for doing one shield. Wow. Um, and then for Division Two, for every I think three or four or so shields you do, you get additional cosmetics for Division Two. Um, I think they've shown what they are. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some emotes. There's some skins. There's a jacket. There's an American flag scarf you can tie on your backpack that mm. looks pretty cool. Um, but th- it's incentive to to play a already fantastic game mm-hmm. to prepare for a game that looks like it could be even better. Yeah. And again, it's on sale. So not, not hashtag not promoted or anything, but just deals of the deals to let you know about. Uh, okay, let's jump into some news, Stephen. Uh, so the first big one. This was kind of the big uh, talk yesterday uh, or Thursday. Um, uh, Overwatch announced their 28th hero. And this has been something. I guess we talked about the teaser last week. Um, in that one, it was just an alleyway. We just saw an alleyway. Uh, we saw some graffiti that had monkeys on it. People were like, "Okay, is this a new map or is this a new character? What's it going to be?" Uh, and people had thought for the longest time that Heyman was going to be a monkey from the same place as uh, Winston, uh, and we were partially right. Uh, later that week, they showed the same scene, but this metal ball rolled through it really fast. Um, and I was just like, I, I don't know what... I Who, who knows what this is? Uh, and then so then, finally, uh, yesterday, Thursday, they came out and announced it. So that 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 ball rolled on the screen. It broke down into like a crab-like uh, mech with guns. And it zooms up to the top hatch. You see the hatch pop off. And out comes this little hamster. And he's like, Pee! And uh, that's it. And that's him. That's all they showed at first. Uh, as the day went on, he was live in the PTR, so if you have access to that, he's live right now. He's been live for a whole day. Um, and some gameplay started coming out. Uh, Bungie, or not Bungie, uh, Blizzard released Blizzard. a uh, like an origin story trailer. Uh, basically, he was a hamster in the same facility that Winston was in. Uh, and Dr. Winston, who uh, was, I guess he trained Winston, um, Anyway, he's talking about how Heyman was this little hamster that they genetically enhanced, and he was kind of a troublemaker. As you do. Like he, he do what? As you do. As you do. You know, hamsters, when you're in, yeah. when in space, you know, right, right. genetically modify hamsters. Um, anyway, he talks about him being kind of a little trickster, and he would always escape his cell, and you know, it would take them forever to find him and stuff. And he talked a lot about like. I can't wait to see what this little guy is going to do. I can't wait to see what this little guy is going to become, that sort of thing. Anyway, but it shows him working on like a hamster ball and eventually turning it into this giant mech. Um, And when Winston escapes, uh, you see this, they, they call it the wrecking ball. You see his mech grappling to the spaceship and being dragged out with him. The wire snaps and he lands in Junker Junkertown or something like that, 
which is where Junkrat and uh, I'm forgetting his name. Uh, Warthog. I'm going to call him Warthog because I know that's not right. But uh, shoot, I forget what his name is. Anyway. Roadhog. What? Roadhog. Roadhog. That's it. Not Warthog. Roadhog. I don't even play this game. I, I do play this game, <laughs> just not in a long time. Anyway, uh, so it shows him landing there. He kind of becomes like a gladiator, makes his mech a fighting mech and everything. Uh, anyway, all that to say, that's his origin story. Uh, but how he plays is crazy. So he's a tank, but he rolls. So he's really, really fast. And uh, like, I don't, I, I hesitate to say this, but like, it seemed like to me he was the fastest character I've seen in a long time. Like, uh, Soldier 76 is one of the only characters that can, like, sprint. Um, yep. And Lucio can make, you know, groups of people move faster. Uh, but I don't know that I've ever seen anybody moving as fast as this ball rolling through. But what really cranks it up is he's got this grappling hook that he can launch onto something and then swing. So he can, like, launch himself up to places that tanks have never gone before hmm. uh some, some in some respects no one's gone before you know other than like uh farah um but the in like so he can do that but he can you can also like hold on to it and spin on an axis <laughs> so like they were sh- i was watching somebody on um i forget the name of the map but it was a control like you're trying to uh, control a zone and there was a pole uh in the middle of that zone and someone launched on, like, attached to it and just started spinning around it, nobody could get in there because every time they walked in, he'd whack them out. And from what I could tell and what I've read and seen, uh, that his ball hitting you does not do damage, but it, it knocks you back, um, which is obviously disorienting. And then in a control situation, if you can't get in there because you're constantly getting knocked back, that's a huge advantage yeah. or disadvantage for you. Um, but anyway... Uh, he's got a bunch of different powers. He can. Uh, I'm remembering most of these offhand, but I just want to look at them. Uh, so he's got um, shields that he can put on over himself. Uh, nice. it's, it's like 200 shields or something. The cool thing about that, it's called adaptive shield. Uh, it grants more shields based on how many people are around you. So if I'm in a group, if I'm if I'm fighting two other people, and I put on my shields, I'm going to get a certain number of shields. But if right. a whole team is there and I put on my shields, I'm going to get more shields, uh, which was kind of cool. That That's effective while you're in mech form or in your ball rolling form. Uh, he has the wrecking ball where he's rolling around. That's the wrecking ball form, the grappling hook, of course. When he's in the air, he can do this move called pile driver, which basically just slams him down on the ground and does a little bit of an area of effect. And then his yeah. ultimate is he can drop a minefield. So he just drops a bunch of uh, proximity mines. And uh, basically, anytime someone walks past them, it blows them up, and it does a ton of damage. So it's kind of int- it's, yeah. it seems like a lamer ult because most of the time when you do an ult, it's like they do really a showy. cry, and then there's some like yeah. big attack that happens. But um, it's super useful because you can drop those in a hallway, you know, and a team may be coming that way, and whether they see the bombs or not, it's going to affect how they what they do next. Because they're either not going to progress that way, they're going to lose a team member, or they're going to go, you know, or they're going to go another way. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how it changes, you know, tactics. Um, a lot of what I've seen today w- or uh, Thursday was people, a bunch of people playing as that character, fighting the same, like you know, the same set of moves. So it'll be interesting to see once he's in the real game how that's going to affect and change. Uh, but the mobility of him is insane. I mean, he, like I said, he's so fast with the grappling hook. He can get out of situations quickly. Um, he can get to places that mechs don't normally go. So I'm, I'm, I, for one, am really excited to try him. Uh, and I can't wait to, to get into it when he's, he's back in. Been talking to Brody and Miles and we, we've all been like, all right, we got to start playing Overwatch again. We got to get into that. Uh, yeah. cause it's just, it's good. It's really good. That's cool. But uh, anyway, what do you think about that, Steven? I know you're not a big Overwatch guy, but... It, I say this every time we mention Overwatch. I respect Overwatch. Mm-hmm. I always respect Blizzard. Mm-hmm. Love Blizzard. Um, it's just not for me. Right. Although, I did discover I enjoy Paladins a pretty good bit. Right. 
Um, so if I ever find Overwatch for super cheap, I might pick it up. Yeah. You know, I was thinking about this today because this is, we're going on, I think, year three or so of, of Overwatch, and they're still dropping new free content. And I it's just... still relevant, too. Yeah, That's exactly. Impressive. It's relevant. The game is still changing. Uh, I've been reading up about some changes they're making to Symmetra. Um, it, it is a game that they are still working on, that people are still playing. They've got the Overwatch League. They are they are in a lot of conversations and in the public eye of gamers a lot. Um, and it's maintained value too. It doesn't. It's it's at full price still. I I really I hope that game developers will take a note of what they what all they have done for their players. Uh, I mean, every new character is free. Every new map is free. Now they don't come. They come fairly often, but not, you know, there's not like a drop. Well, here's six new maps or whatever. Um, but, you know, we've gotten a bunch of maps since the original game launched and tons of new characters. So it, I just, every time, as this continues to happen, as they continue to add more characters, I'm just always going to just marvel at the fact that they're still dropping all this free content um, and it's, the game is still successful for it. So take note game developers of that yes um all right uh, so, uh, quick side note side note i love um, side notes before i forget uh, i actually just received a message from kaylin one of our subs uh -huh. um destiny 2 will have a free weekend june 29th to july 2nd yes yes i or, think i remember seeing that somewhere so yeah that would be that is huge if you're wanting to look at playing destiny again or if you haven't join our clan try it join Join the Chortle Clan. Um, Chortle Games. All right, back to business. Uh, so, uh, Sony, uh, so at E3, Nintendo announces Fortnite coming to the Switch, right? Big yep. news, great, Big exciting. Moment. Tons of people jumped on it. Uh, and a lot of people jumped on it and immediately regret, found out that uh, PlayStation, if, you, if you've played Fortnite on the PlayStation, you cannot connect your account to any other devices aside from mobile or PC. Um, as I understand it, that everywhere else is fine. Uh, but if you're on Xbox, if you're on Switch, I don't know what else there is, but anything else other than you know PC, uh, if you've started on Sony, or even if you started on Xbox, we're at your friend's house and said, ah, let me just connect my account. That way I can get all my gear and play with you. That Once you've done it once, you're locked in. You can no longer use it anywhere else. Uh, so that 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 was probably always there, but the the hey this big free game is now available on your system kind of thing uh, happened. And Nintendo, I feel like is the is most people have an Xbox, a PlayStation, or sorry, most people have an Xbox and a Switch or a PlayStation and a Switch. There's not a lot of people that that have all three. Um, right, or both PlayStation and Xbox. It's usually pick one and then get Nintendo. At least that's how I always feel. Felt uh, anyway. All that to say, a lot of people found that out. It was a big story. Uh, Sony came out at E3 and basically just said it was very impersonal, and it was almost like they did not even really understand what was going on. Um, the the what what is going on is that people cannot connect their accounts so that they, they, your battle pass does not transfer over. Um, and obviously, you can't play with your friends on PlayStation who are playing on Switch, uh, and vice versa. None of that. Yep. Uh, on Xbox and Switch, you can do that, and that's not a problem. Uh, and on mobile and any other device, it's not a problem. It's just with Sony. Uh, anyway, Sony came out and was just like, with 8 million people playing on PlayStation, why would you want to play anywhere else? Uh, and... Everybody, the community was just like, what the heck kind of an answer is this? Like, this is not whatever, whatever. Uh, and so Sony uh, this week uh, came out and made another uh, discussion about it. They basically, it was a little bit better. Um, they said that they understood, Eurogamer, uh, Sean, uh, Eurogamer asked Sean Layden kind of point blank about it. Um, and he was saying, basically the guy asked, you know, do you, do you like? Are you even hearing players right now? Like, do you know what people are really complaining about? And uh, Sean Layden said, uh, "We hear it. 
We're looking at all the possibilities. Uh, he said, as you can imagine, the circumstances around that affect a lot more than just that one game. Uh, so he says they're confident that they'll get to a solution which will be understood and accepted by the community uh, while at the same time supporting our business. So not the answer I'm sure a lot of people were hoping to hear, but way better than, you know, with 8 million players, why would you want to play anywhere else? So, um, yeah, that sounds I, like something that Microsoft would say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, old Microsoft. I think new Microsoft old, might, yeah. uh, might have yeah. said something better. But uh, anyway, it's interesting. Uh, we've, I don't know if we've talked about this story on the podcast before or not, but it's been interesting lately how PlayStation is on the top, and so they're not given any ground you know, on anything, even yeah. to the point that it's affecting their, their players and their gamers. Um, well, as far as a business strategy, mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of a brutal offense mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because the moment they start saying, they, they've got a they've got a staggering lead on Microsoft, yeah. mm -hmm. and the moment they start saying, "Oh, you can play with your friends on Xbox on your while you're on your PlayStation," that feels like to them, I'm sure, giving leeway to the massive lead that they have. To where mm -hmm. it's like, we have we have the cream of the crop. Let's continue to be the cream of the crop and give people no reason right. to get an Xbox. Right. I mean, I'm a PlayStation player. All my friends are PlayStation players, so it. See, but the, so, so that's that's the cross-play issue, and that's I think that's what yeah. he's saying there. Which, to some degree, I feel like he still doesn't really get what a lot of people are frustrated about. But he's totally right. If they say, "Hey, Fortnite players, you can cross-play," you know, with your friends on Xbox and Switch now, suddenly every game, Destiny, yep. uh, Division, whatever. Any Overwatch, anything that has multiplayer suddenly is going to have... If, if Fortnite gets the cross-play, everything's going to want it. So I can totally get that it's not just as simple as like, oh yeah, hey, hit that switch for Fortnite, but don't hit that switch for anything else. I, I get that. I think what I'm more personally frustrated over, and I don't know that this works in any other game, and if Fortnite was kind of a precedent for this, but uh, when Fortnite came to mobile, I downloaded it, turned it on, and it asked me to connect to my Epic account. I was like, I don't even know that I have an Epic account. But I, log I figured it out, logged in, logged in, and I had all of my stuff that I've achieved on my PlayStation. And I was just like, this is great. Like, I've got all my cool gear that I've got. My ba I'm still making progress on my battle pass on my phone that when I get to my PlayStation, I can continue working on. And it's like all that progress carried over and carried across. Now, personally, I don't care if I couldn't play with you. Like, say you're, you're let's say, Stephen, in this imaginary world, you're playing on your PlayStation, you're playing Fortnite, and you message me and say, there hey, you want to no, play? There is no uh, reality it, within our infinite realities. <laughs> <laughs> So let's okay. just, for sake of argument, let's say that happens. Yeah. Uh, and you message me, and I'm on my phone, and I jump in with you. Like, I pers if it said, oh, sorry, you're on mobile. You can't play with this PlayStation person. I personally would not care. But what I would care about, and what I do care about, is that I can't log in. I can't download the game on Switch and log in and, number one, get the gear that I've already acquired and paid for on PlayStation. Uh, to my switch, but also I can't do switch and let that progression transfer over to PlayStation. That personally for me is what I'm more upset about. Yep. But honestly, I don't know if, if it hadn't worked so smoothly with the mobile, I don't know that I would have expected it to have worked that way on, uh, on switch to PlayStation. But is that, would you, to your knowledge, Steven, is that kind of a new thing? Like, having this battle pass that between different systems, your yes. progression is linking and that that's a pretty typical thing. No, that's new. That's new. Okay. That, see, that's, that's how I feel. New, Cause yeah, normally progress with games mm -hmm. did not transfer over. Right. Uh, and, but like now with cross play being pushed more into, into the, the conversation, mm -hmm. um, 
that's di- that's different. Right. In fact, I was I was a, a little surprised to hear that that's how Fortnite did it. Mm-hmm. Um, I love it. I think it makes total sense because yeah. the and especially especially from a Sony to Switch Nintendo standpoint, because the 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 PlayStation above and beyond is so much more powerful than the Switch. Um, and that's regardless of even going into the the, the PlayStation Pro. You know, it, it is already faster, better graphically, whatever, whatever. Uh, but the mobility of the Switch makes it a completely new beast. Um, so if I'm on a shoot, if I'm out of town, I'm going to take my Switch. And if I want to play Fortnite, I'll play it there. Uh, but if I'm home, I'm going to want to play on my PlayStation. So to have that cross-progression makes so much sense and makes it so much easier for a gamer. Um, but I don't know how that affects business. And I don't know how, you know, I bought my Battle Pass through PlayStation. Does PlayStation get a cut of that? Or is that all e- Epic's money? So um, I might be able to give you insight as to why they're not playing ball on that grounds with the Switch. All right. PS Vita. You think they're going to come back with something? I don't know if it is. Is Fortnite on the PS Vita? The Vita does, does not cross- exist anymore, Steve. <laughs> does it? I didn't. I didn't know if it was still around or not. No, 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 no. But, they have, okay. as I understand it, they have ceased production. They never okay. talk about it anymore. We've we've talked about on the podcast before how they're dropping the PS3 and Vita mm-hmm. games for PS Plus, mm-hmm. which we're going to get to. Uh, they're dropping those. I think that's next year, in 2019. That's going to be when that falls out. Uh, they gave some date. Uh, we talked about it. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the Vita is pretty much okay. no more. Um, See, and for- I never I never looked at the Vita, but like I did know that it could cross-play from PlayStation 2 or to the Vita. And so my thought was, well, what if they're just pigeonholing that portable gimmick to where they can still use their hardware that no one has? Right. But, I mean, it's it's... That 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 makes sense to me, but I mm-hmm. don't think they're going that way. Because when the Switch came out, when the yeah. Switch exploded, um, there were a lot of questions to Microsoft and Sony. Hey, you see what Nintendo's doing over here? Are y'all going to bring back a new Vita? Are y'all going to try to do something like this? And I think Sony took out some patents, but like from everything I've heard since then, Sony officials have just been like, we're not interested in going that direction. Um, I think they're much more focused on VR and the PSVR um, and making that work and then being, you know, top dog graphically and power wise than trying to compete with them, the mobile market, if you will. It's 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 probably Hand just a matter market. of it's probably just a matter of opening up Pandora's box. Yeah. I don't if know. You give them an inch, they'll take a mile. Yeah. I, I feel like Fortnite kind of opened that Pandora's box and did something that I've never seen before. That I think that, that should is be true done that more. Fortnite but. let all the evil into the world. <laughs> I just, I personally wish I could be a fly on the wall and understand where that money goes. Because, because yeah. if it's going to Epic either way, what does it matter what system I play on? But I imagine that PlayStation's PlayStation got to take a cut of that. PlayStation gets a cut of it, yeah. almost for certain. Yeah, um, and that's that's probably a large part of their motivation but also just a matter of keeping people on their system Mm -hmm. like uh, because they don't want it to look like cutthroat business Mm -hmm. probably so if they're like hey switch owners play fortnite with playstation but not you microsoft right right Uh, well and that's what's interesting uh i was gonna say something I, i just it just left me uh you know there was a a video last week about minecraft cross play xbox and and switch and it was really kind of crazy after all this because it was like better together, play together, whatever. Um, it's it's real interesting. But from so what from you you mentioned they don't want people to go to other systems, so they think that doing this is going to keep people from leaving. What I've seen in a lot of situations is people are now using their Switch as their main account because that's the thing that they take with them. That's the thing that they're going to play most on. So that's now their default account, and they either have one on Sony that they kind of play, or they just have dropped it completely. 
So personally, with season five about to start in a few days, I think July 12th is when Brody said it was going to start. Yeah. Uh, when the next season starts, I may put my battle pass on Switch, and I may just you know start fresh from there. Um, it's just an interesting decision from Sony. I th- I personally think I understand they've got to protect their cross play and everything, but as far as like cross progression with their with Epic accounts, I feel like they could make that work and it would be a lot less of a bombshell. But they're sticking to their guns, and we'll see how it progresses for them from there. Uh, all right, uh, last bit of news before we get to like you know all the exciting what's going to be free in July. Um, Bomberman R, which is a Switch game that launched pretty early in the Switch's life cycle, uh, like I want to say in the first month or so. Um, it was the new Bomberman game. It was really fun. We did a Let's Play of it, me and Brody, on the channel. You can check that out. Uh, but anyway, they have announced that they're releasing some free DLC, uh, and it's really kind of crazy. It's uh, Konami adding... Uh, they're adding Naked Snake, Solid Snake... Who's the dude with the samurai sword in that series? Raiden. What, who? Raiden. Yeah, okay. Raiden. They're adding him, and then they're also adding uh, Xavier Woods, who's uh, the wrestler, uh, which I, really? I I don't really understand. Uh, maybe maybe I've misunderstood, and he's voicing somebody. But uh, he he does a video game channel. Yeah, so yeah. He just be a uh, I want to say it's up down, up up down down up up down down. That's it. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, so he's I know he's big into video games and everything, so that makes sense. But it just seems kind of strange. I don't know what his connection with Konami is. Anyway, I digress. Uh, the exciting thing is that David Hayter uh, is the voice of both of the uh, Solid Snake or Snake characters. Uh, so a lot of fans are excited about that. Uh, as I understand it, he was the voice of Snake in a lot of uh, up up until Phantom Pain. Yeah. Okay. He was Snake. So he's kind of the the OG. He's Snake. he's OG Snake. He he is um, as much. Snake as Michael Ironside is Sam Fisher or Kevin Conroy is Batman. Got yes, yes. See the Batman connection, I totally get. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, see that I, I, me and Brody played it. Uh, it's fun for a hot second, but it's not like the greatest <laughs> thing ever. But uh, it's it's cool that they're bringing in some new stuff now. Um, it's making me want to go back and play it. I'm gonna have to find that cartridge and and do it. We may do another let's play on it. Uh, with these new characters, see what it's about. Um, but anyway, it's just kind of exciting, a cool update to a game that you know a lot of people may have missed or may have gotten and kind of fell away from. So, all right, Steven, let's dive into all the free games we're going to need to play in July. Xbox games with gold. We'll start with that because I don't care about Xbox. Um, uh, you're going to get Assault Androids Cactus. It's a twin stick shooter <laughs> that looks really weird. Uh, but it's it's there. Uh, Death Squared, which is a co-op puzzle game. Uh, this looks really interesting. Uh, I know Kind of Funny's done some Let's Plays with this. Uh, there's some other... I'm sure there's tons of them out there, but uh, it's an interesting puzzle game with co-op. Uh, you get Virtua Fighter Five and Splinter Cell Conviction, Steven. Ooh. So, yes. But that's so, for... Is new, that for Xbox One or 360? That one, I believe, is going to the 360, but I did not write that oh. down, so I don't know. It may be... I think all of these go to Xbox One because they're they're okay. good on backwards compatibility. Conviction's a good game. Yeah. It's a fun game. I just knew you were a big fan of Splinter Cell, so I thought you might get a at least a, a, a cheer out of that, and, and I did. Yeah, that, game, so. that game was $20 like six years ago, but okay. <laughs> you know, that's my that's my only thing about these games is that I feel like, and we'll get there in a second, but I feel <laughs> like every time a game drops to a threshold of when there's a sale going on, that game is like a dollar, that's the next PS Plus or Xbox Games as well game. Like, guarantee you it's going to be there. And for me, I always find those deals. I pay that dollar, and then I'm peeved when, in a few months, it's free. Anyway, speaking of things that I'm going to be peeved about, PlayStation <laughs> Plus games for July are Heavy Rain, uh, which is another David Cage. Uh, that That's a, an even older one, right? Or is it newer? But, yeah, that's, that's older. That yeah. came out during the PS3 era. That's what I thought. But I have heard that it's significantly better than Beyond Two Souls. So... There you go. That's maybe good. they released, yeah, maybe they did Beyond Two Souls, saw so people weren't too happy about that, said, let's yeah. do Heavy Rain and see if this is a David Cage problem 
or is it just that <laughs> game problem? I might have to play Heavy Rain because that's the one with the uh, with the glitch, the Sean glitch. Have uh, we showed you that? I don't think so. So like, there's a scene where you're this the, this character is running through. And you have to pr- press X to yell Sean. He's running through the rain and stuff. But the game glitch makes it to where um, the X to Sean doesn't go away. So the entire scene plays out and you can press X. And the guy's just like, Sean! <laughs> he like gets shot at one point And he's just like, Sean! Sean! <laughs> it's, it's like that and Jason... Uh-huh. There's a press X to Jason as well. Two great memes on YouTube. Go check them out. Your day will be better for it. Your day but will be better I might for have it. to play just wow. because of that. Wow. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, that. Then Absolver, which is a, a kind of a new fighting game. It's got a really great kind of uh, not low poly, but just kind of a minimalist fighting game. Uh, it's all about fighting style, and you learn fighting style by fighting other people in the game. Uh, and so you use a certain style. As you fight, you, you'll you pick up on other moves that other people are doing. Yeah. You'll, you'll eventually learn those moves. Um, and there's like, I think there were... I think there were three styles, and then there was a hidden style that was the drunk fighting yeah. style, um, which I really wanted to get, but... Um, so Brody and I bought that game when it came out. Uh, I can't remember if we streamed it or if we tried to do a Let's Play with it or what happened, but we 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 were like, this is, no, like, no. We were just like, nah, we're done. This is not good. It, it's not that it's not, it's, it's, it's interesting and it's different. There's not any hand-holding. They drop you in the world, tell you a little bit about how to, like here's the buttons to press. Here's the way to switch stances. Um, but then they pretty much just let you go. And once you've got the world, um, it's open world, but I think it's in like segments and sections. Um, and you kind of find your way to section to section to section. I, I just remember being very confused, not sure where I needed to be going. Um, you were supposed to be finding people to fight. Um, you would find, other people like other players because it was it was completely connected where i could just run into any random person who was not a friend of mine or anything just whoever was online um and it was very interesting uh but i just eventually i i i didn't know what to do didn't know i i hit that wall of progression where you've really got to learn the game and something else released and i moved on uh anyway i'm excited now that it's free i wish i could have gotten it for free um but I think Steven's going to download it and try it. We may yeah. do a stream or a live uh, Let's Play of it or something down the road. But um, it's it's an interesting fighting game. The fighting styles are really cool. Um, the, the whole goal of the game is to build your fighting deck of moves that you know. And you do that by just fighting. Um, and so it's really fun. If you could get good at it, um, I'm sure you would really, really enjoy it. Um, but that, that's the whole progression is, is learning to fight in different ways. So it's free. I highly suggest you check it out. I would not have suggested you pay for it. Um, (laughs) but unless it was at a, at a deal, um, it was only $30. So that's already pretty much a a, a good deal for, for a game you're just going to try. But, um, it, it is very different. It's very cool. Um, I just wish they had done a little bit more with it to, I don't know, give me something else to work towards other than just building a deck. But anyway, I digress. It's worth your time. Go try it out. Uh, and then Black Ops the is is still available. Still free. They yeah. announced that. Uh, at e- They announced it at E3 in the Sony press conference. Sony press, yeah. It was about midway through June. So this is going to be available f- through the rest of July. Um, they've been doing stuff like this where like, hey, here's a random PSVR game that's available for two of the months or hey here's a whatever Uh, so that's kind of taking up that slot and then quickly your PS3 and Vita games are Deception 4 The Nightmare Princess uh, Rayman 3 HD Space Overlords and Zero Escape Zero Time Dilemma every single time I hear the, the titles of like the PS Vita 
PS Plus games, it always sounds like a import, a Japan import game. I don't know who came up with the name Zero Escape, Zero Time Dilemma, but why would you have put Zero in there twice? That's all I want to know. There, there's always like I feel like when I look through the PS Vita library, it's always like, oh, um, Index Card Five, <laughs> like like it, like some really random. Thing and there's four four previous installments of this. <laughs> like what? It's bad enough that that's a name, but then you yes. think about there's four others. Of these? Uh, yeah, no, I don't know. There there are definitely worse names, but I as I wrote that down, I was just like, why did they put zero twice? It could have easily been zero escape time dilemma, but why zero time? I don't understand. Anyway, Zero's cool. I digress. It's not for me to decide. It's the it's the X of numbers. Is it, though? <laughs> in Japan, it is. Okay. They put zeros and X's in everything. That's why in Mega Man X, Mega Man is called X, and his partner is literally called Zero. <laughs> oh, Japan. Good games. Well, hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this episode of Chortlecast. We do appreciate it. If you enjoyed it, there's a couple things you can do to help us out. Number one, leave a comment on this video. If you're on YouTube, you're already at Troll Games. Uh, leave a comment. Let us know what you thought of uh, all the topics that we talked about. Uh, leave us a like. Share if you enjoyed. Uh, and always, of course, consider subscribing. We do this podcast every Friday at 12 o'clock Central Time. Uh, so jump in, enjoy the chat and conversation with us. Uh, you can also help us out by emailing us at chortlecast at gmail.com. If you've got a story that you hear about over the week and think, hey, I want to know what the Chortle Boys think of this, um, you can send it to us that way. Uh, that's a great way to get in touch with us. If you have a topic you'd like to hear us talk about, like uh, I think it was a few weeks ago, I forget what the Games, uh, GameStop article was that I pulled for us. It was like the best RPGs or something, and we kind of like discussed our thoughts yeah. on that. So uh, topics like that, if you have something you, you, you think would be cool to hear us talk about, um, we, we, we always love those. Those are great things to talk about on a slower week, that sort of thing. You send that to us at trollcast at gmail.com. That's a great help for us. Uh, if you're a podcast listener, you can uh, leave us a nice little review on iTunes. That really helps uh, people find the podcast, gets us up in the rankings, that sort of thing. So we'd really appreciate that. Um, you can follow us on our social media platforms. We have Twitter at Chortle Games. We have Facebook at Chortle Games. Uh, we're also on Twitch, uh, Chortle underscore games. And then um, we also have a Discord, which is in the description of this video. I would say what it is, but I, it's like some really long code link, and I don't understand how... Every time, every time I say in a stream, hey, find us on Discord, I, I almost say at, and then stop, because it's like, where is the, that at? The Discord <laughs> is called Chortle Fam. I don't know if you can look that up. I don't really understand Discord. Brody set this up for us. I, I've learned a lot about Discord over the last couple months, but I don't like how you get into groups. But anyway, we have that there. It's a lot of fun. Uh, one of our, A bunch of our subs post memes, so we have plenty of memes going on. Steven and I will find the occasional meme every now and then and post in there. I made a Ghost of Toshiba meme. That was really funny. Classic. Uh, so we, we do a lot of fun in there. Uh, and then, of course, we you know when we're live or when a new Let's Plays out, we... The Discord always gets a message so they know what's going on. Uh, but anyway, that's uh, how you can find us, connect with us better. Uh, if you're new to our channel, we do content six days a week. Uh, so we've got a great uh, weekend and week of content coming up for you. Uh, the podcast airs Friday at 12 o'clock Central Time. Uh, on Fridays, we do two live streams. Uh, this Friday, today, I'm going to be streaming uh, The Adventures of Captain Spirit which is a new game from the developers of Life is Strange and now the newly coming Life is Strange 2. So uh, Captain Spirit was announced at E3. It was announced it was going to be free. Uh, and then later, post E3, it was announced that uh, Life is Strange 2 is coming out. And I don't know if they said this originally or not, but uh, Captain Spirit is apparently a prequel to uh, Life is Strange 2. So... Um, I'm curious to see how it goes. I have not played any of the other Life is Strange games. I have the original one that I want to play through. I've heard a lot of great things about the prequel to that one, which was the uh, 
Oh shoot! It's Life is Strange, the storm before the storm. The storm. Uh, I heard a lot of great things about that. There's a great D and D sequence, Stephen, where you can play D and D as the characters through yeah. a couple chapters. Uh, so I really want to try that. Um, anyway, I am probably eventually going to do these, but since this is free and it's new, I'm going to do that. I'm going to play through the whole thing. Uh, it's only about two hours, so check in with me. I'm probably going to start about five o'clock, maybe six o'clock Central Time. So just check in there. Again, subscribing and hitting that notification bell is the easiest way to know when we're going live. Then, later that night, uh, maybe around 9 or so, Stephen's doing a rehearsal dinner uh, beforehand. So he's going to be coming back drunk as a skunk to play Far Cry 3. I'm going to hit up Facebook Live on my phone and be like, what up, I'm drunk at a rehearsal dinner. (laughs) (laughs) No, that will not not be Stephen. I wish it was, but no, it's not going to be. Uh, so anyway, Steven's going to be playing Far Cry Three. What what are you uh, what are you planning on hitting? You you've got a, you've done a couple story missions. You're trying to play so, through the whole story. It's kind of been like a, a yeah uh, yeah. It's been a series. Yeah. yeah. Um. So we just killed Voss. Right. Um. And we've moved on to Hoyt's Island. Hoyt mm-hmm. is the the actual main villain. Um. We probably won't take on Hoyt. Th- that stream. We we might do a little bit of the new island, but mm-hmm. I realized the other day that I need to do some more crafting. So we may go back to the old Island and clear up some, out, some outposts, do some hunting, hunt sharks. Mm-hmm. That'll, Ooh, be, that'll fun. be fun. So, so anyway, far cry three with Steven. Uh, and then Saturday, Saturday is a wild card. Saturday has always been a wild card, but it's really a wild card. Like we just flipped the wild card. and The Joker was on there and it was like, what? Um, that was a really weird analogy, but Hey, we're here. Uh, Steven and I are both going to be at a wedding. I'm filming a wedding. Steven is attending wedding. the wedding. Yes. Uh, following me around at the wedding is what's going to yes. be happening. We're going to be hanging out, having Bring some whiskey. Cake. Uh, I, and they better be having some drinks at this wedding is all I have to say. Jake's going to have a camera, and we're going to be like, all right, Jake, all right, op- open. Here's some cake. Here comes the cake. <laughs> uh, yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, anyway, anyway, we're going to have a great time, uh, but uh, that it's going to cr- disrupt our normal stream schedule on Saturday. So... The current plan is that we are going to stream something at some point Saturday night. <laughs> Somewhere. <laughs> Somewhere at some point at some time. And I don't know what that's going to be. Um, we've yeah. tossed around, uh, what's that new game? Uh, Enter the Gungeon. Gun- Gungeon? I- Enter the Gungeon. Yeah. It's not even new. It's been out for right, a while. Right, it's been out for a while. Just, yeah. uh, but it's new, it's new to us. We are, we just, Steven's getting it. Uh, we may play that. We may play the zombies mode uh, in Black Why? Ops. It may be a couch co-op thing where Steven and I are sitting there together. It may be just Steven. We have no idea. We've got to we've got to get through the night and see where it takes us. But anyway, Although, we're the fact that a Saturday has not disrupted us to this degree before is nothing short of a miracle. <laughs> absolutely, and it's it's only going to get worse from here because as we get into fall, fall is hectic. Especially for me, because my job requires a lot of Saturday time on, on in the fall, but hopefully not at night. Typically, it's in the day. But anyway, I digress. Stupid football. I hate sports. Uh, here we go. Um, yes. Yeah, so something sometime Saturday night, maybe just one stream, maybe two. We may be doing something with Friendly Fire Games. It is a wild card. Show up. It's gonna have. It's gonna be great. Espe- especially if we're on a couch co-op, because I will have had drinks. So I will be having a great time. <laughs> Stephen will not have, but it's it is plus. Be- you guys have not yet seen a couch co-op with me and Jake. This is true. We've done the Thursday night streams, you and I, but never, never couch. Never couch. Never couch. Yeah. Uh, all right. So uh, we have content the rest of the week too. Monday we're gonna have a let's play. It's gonna be me and Stephen playing Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited for that one. <laughs> I am the master, uh, the master of Mario plus Rabbids, and and by that I mean I am the only other person in this little battle who has played it. Steven's never played it, but Steven is the XCOM man. He's wearing an XCOM, XCOM shirt right now. That's the same shirt that he wore in that episode. It is. Uh, but anyway, it's, it's uh, master versus master. Who's gonna win? Uh, you're gonna want to watch it because it's hilarious. Um, that's gonna be Monday. Uh, Tuesday is the XCOM finale. Speaking of XCOM, so sad. It's so sad. I'm really disappointed. But like we're at part 19, and these streams are at least two hours long each. Right. We've spent so much time in this yes, game. We have. 
a lot of a lot of our subs are are soldiers in the game. We've mm-hmm. built up. Last week was all prep. It was getting ready for the final fight. N- the Tuesday, it's it's a, it's it. This is it. This is all or nothing. This is it. Uh, yep. People are gonna die. It's gonna be crazy. Shit's gonna go down. You do not want to miss. If you have watched even one of these XCOM streams, you've got to come to this one to see Absolutely. how it ends because it's gonna be heartbreaking, yeah. heart wrenching. I've told Steven I want to cry at the end of this stream. I, I mean, honestly, I might cry. So even if no one dies, I mean, people are probably gonna die. People are but gonna I might die. cry because it's I, like I, it's I, over. People are gonna die. So you're gonna want to tune in. See if it's you, see if it's I'm, me, see if it's Steven in real I'm life or try. in the game. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> I'm going to try to do, like, it's going to be a two-pronged assault for the final mission, mm-hmm. I think is how it goes. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to try to do a mission or two before that mm-hmm. so that every single character I have made mm-hmm. for a sub mm-hmm. gets a mission on this final episode. Right, great. great. So you're not going to want to miss that. It's going to be awesome. Either way, however it plays out, it's going to be fun. Uh, and then Wednesday, it's going to be a Let's Play called Ultimate Chicken Horse. Uh, it's going to be me, <laughs> Miles, and Steven playing Ultimate Chicken Horse, which is a fun That's little platformer game. Uh, you've probably seen it. It's a little old at this point, but it's hilarious. We had a great time. Uh, Thursday is when we do what we call our Couch Co-op live stream. That's where uh, two of us try to get together, sit on a couch, and play a video game. Most recently, the couch part of that has been taken out, and it's just been co-op. Uh, yeah. We've done most recently, we've done some. Uh, we we did division. We've done some destiny there. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know what's gonna. We've done some gang beasts. We try to do uh, games where you can see everybody on one screen, uh, and then we also try to have a face cam on that one with everybody sitting on a couch. But that doesn't always happen. So. Anyway, uh, those are always fun streams. We may be mixing that up a little bit since it's it has kind of become more of just a co-op uh, deal. Yeah, but with, with the way with XCOM coming to a close, mm-hmm. and some of our subs have said that um, Tuesdays for a series stream don't work as well for them. Right. So we we've talked about moving things around, flipping those once around. We start a new series. The couch yeah. co-op doesn't really work well for us on Thursdays because that's yeah. when we film this, the podcast. So we film this. I have to go home, quickly edit, and then jump into that. So there's going to be a little bit of flipping schedule after that XCOM. Probably, yeah, Couch Co-op live streams are going to start on Tuesdays. And uh, our next like full series that Steven does is going to be on Thursdays. So uh, anywho, yeah. stay, stay tuned for that mix-up. But anyway, this, this upcoming Thursday, July 5th, we're going to be doing that. Uh, and then, of course, next Friday we'll have another podcast for you. Two more streams and... Uh, on Friday and on Saturday. So Saturday should not be dis- too disruptive. Uh, we're going to be filming a bunch of Let's Plays that weekend, but it should that, that Saturday should be back to normal. So uh, anywho, uh, thank you, Steven. It's been a good show. Had a lot of fun. It was fun. So, yeah. I just feel so, it just feels so good to talk about video games and like all the exciting things that are going happening. I'm ready to go yes. play some Division. I'm ready, yes. to, I'm ready to get into some Overwatch. I can't wait. It's great. Okay. It's a great day to be alive. You know, <laughs> video games are great. I love it. Steven, any Love closing thoughts for our friends and, and family and, and subs and viewers and listeners and 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 all those good people? Oh man, that's I thought I was I built up a lot of pressure for you, so I hope you got a good one. We're, have we been talking to those people this whole time? Yes. Oh no. <laughs> <Hi>. So <laughs> um we played division survival mode last night. Um, did we win? Maybe, but did we have a good time? Yes. Go watch it. It was fun. <laughs> you know, we've ended the show on some really weird notes, but that, that may take the cake. Just, I'm hyping us, but in the past, in the future. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. In the future. Five o'clock central yeah. time. That's wrong. Don't listen to me. <laughs> <laughs>